Hi, my name is John Gibbons, and today we're going to look at manipulation of the cervical dorsal junction of the cervical thoracic junction, which is basically C7 on T1. So I'm going to show you two variation techniques here. One is almost like more of a, of a side bending sort of thrust, and the second one is more of a prone horizontal thrust. So they're both very different, uh, but both could be pretty effective. Now, if you decide to have a C7 T1, is restricted on whichever assessment you decide to do, then you might find that the end range of cervical rotation might be limited, possibly. You might find that when you flex, you notice that the gap between C7 and T1 is limited. If you were to palpate it, you might notice the, the spinous process of C7 is drifting either to the left or to the right. So as part of the treatment, the nerve that exits will be the, uh, the C8 nerve, so C8 and T1, will form the ulnar nerve and obviously that supplies sensation in particular to the little finger size and the, the motor to the abductor digiti minimi muscle when you push out. So if you've got any tingling to the little finger or weakness here, then maybe it's coming from this sort of area. Um, it's not so much a neck manipulation even though you are obviously using the neck as some sort, so be a little bit careful on this one. So I tend to use the first one, I'm going to use my, my MCP joint here and the way I do this, I'm going to add in what we call a side bend in motion, but it's basically a type 1 mechanic. So I'm going to find the C7, so I'm going to come down where the rib meets the T1. So I'm just going to go above that. So this MCP joint is going to come in on its side here, like that. And I'm going to side bend the neck to the left, and then I'm going to induce rotation to the right. So that would be a type 1 mechanic. Now, when I feel a lock, okay, the tension point, there would be a, a bind just here, then the thrust would be towards, almost towards the axilla on the opposite side, and the thrust is going to be in that direction. So let's see how we respond here. We're not going to force this, okay? So we're just going to apply a side bend in, and then we're going to just lock him in. Take a small breath in, please. And then as he breathes out, I'm going to come in, side bend, lock, and the thrust would be, and then we have a cavitation to that right side. And that released really well. Now the second one, I'm going to show a variation. So instead of doing a, a side bending movement, I'm going to use my thumb, and then this time, my thumb is going to come onto the C7, and I'm going to then side bend him towards me and rotate him away. So we're going to be in this position here. So I'm going to, he's almost going to come out of the face or a little bit. So there's the position here. Watch you don't cover the ear too much, and try not to use the neck as the lever. So the thrust is using the thumb onto the spinous process. And again, we side bend, we rotate to lock, take a small breath in please. And as he breathes out, we lock and the thrust would be, and again, it was a nice cavitation on that right side. So then I showed you two variations for manipulation to the cervical dorsal junction. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel and you will get all my new videos. Thank you for watching.